Hey guys, Libby here with Woot Recruit, your go-to recruiting program for the high turnover industry, such as cleaning, lawn care, construction, roofing, you name it. If you're in the high turnover industry, we are your go-to solution. We are the first ever recruitment program tailored exclusively for the service-based industry, turning recruiting into a growth engine. Again, I am Libby and we have a very special guest. He is a serial entrepreneur. Uh, introduce yourself real quick and we'll get started. All right. My, my name is Marvin Salcedo. And uh, like Libby said, I am a serial entrepreneur. Uh, I own quite a few companies uh, down in little old Tyler, Texas. And um, I'm, my main company is a service company. It's called Salcedo Home Solutions. And in that, we offer a, a ton of stuff in the green space, lawn maintenance, landscaping, fertilization, weed control, flower bed maintenance. Uh, Christmas, there's something else in there that I'm not remembering, but we also do uh, home remodeling, uh, housekeeping, garage doors, and HVAC services. Um, Man. And then I've also got a garage uh, or a mechanic shop with a paint body shop. And then we also have a hot rod restoration company. Uh, I also have a small real estate company. Uh, and then I do business coaching. And, you know, I love to be able to share my past experiences with people and help lead them and guide them so that they can grow their businesses and not have to go through the same crap that I went through in business. Because quite frankly, I have no business degree. You know, I, I went to the school of hard knocks. I learned a lot of what I've done just by doing it the wrong way. And, you know, I would rather somebody learn from my mistakes so they don't have to go through, through the same crap that I went through. And so that's why I do what I do. Because I, I just love helping people. I would agree. That's one reason why we do the podcast, because it's mainly about mistakes and journey and what did I learn. That that way, um, other yeah. entrepreneurs can <clears throat> can skip those mistakes and learn from ours. That's why I love books, too. Every book we pick up talks about it's a mistake. It's a $20 coaching session um, is, is in most of those business books. So, you know, before we just got done recording the Fearlessness podcast and we were talking about you know, recording this. And I was like, Hey, what's, what do you want to talk about? What's your favorite thing when it comes to the people aspect of the business? And that's like the hiring, recruiting, culture, retention. And we talked about, uh, Marvin said culture. I'm like, man, everybody loves culture. Once you figure it out, I think you love it. It's just so hard Absolutely. to figure it out. I didn't real, I didn't realize how important culture was until I our culture changed and it started becoming really good. And then I realized how attractive that was to other people, other employees. And it, we started to draw and attract some really great talent because I saw one, how we treated our employees, that our employees were actually happy, uh, that they love to do what they do. I mean, I, I have companies that try and poach our employees all the time. and offer them more money and they say, no, nah, we're good. We're happy where we are. And, uh, you know, we, they, they only do that because we have a good culture. If our culture was bad or if it was toxic, we, you know, is they would be exiting as fast as we bring them in. And oh, I, mean, I have employees that have been here 20 plus years and, you know, people don't stick around that long if you have a bad culture. And so we've, we've worked extremely, extremely, extremely hard on our culture uh, because I don't want people to go in as, as expensive, as much money as I've spent bringing them in the fold and training them. Crap, it's even more expensive to replace them. And oh, so 100%. I don't want to go through that again. And, and we were talking about, you know, as visionaries, as owners, as CEOs, whatever title you want to call yourself, when you finally find that COO, that integrator, that you are so burnt out and so ready to leave to like, I don't want to look at that no more. Mm -hmm. I feel that, and I know, cause I made this mistake. <laughs> I feel that we're so burnt out and ready to kind of just get some time freedom back that we forget the culture part of it, that that's our job. Um, if you're an EOS fan, you know that, but that's our job as visionary or COO is to continue the culture of the company. So what would you say are some tips that you use, like you, Marvin, not so much the company, but 
what is your job? Like, how do you remember to do it? How do you remember to keep building it? What are some tips that you, you do? So one thing that I do is I treat people like they're people. Um, you know, we have to remember that as much as we rely on people to show up, do their job every day. And, and, you know, sometimes we can forget that they're humans and they go through crap and their kids are going to get sick and they have marriage problems and their car broke down and treat them like humans, you know, and, and sometimes you got, you have to look past, this is not a, HR politically correct, but sometimes you have to look past policy and look at the reality of things. And yeah, you know, yeah, they've, they've missed all their sick days and yeah, they've used up all their sick days and they've used up all their PTO and their kid is, you know, violently ill and they have to take them to the, the children's hospital in Dallas and, you know, they're going to be out again. And, you know, what do you do with that? Well, policy may say that they've missed so many days you need to terminate them. But sometimes you have to look at the humanity side of things and realize that, you know what, these are people and they're human and they need help. And sometimes just coming alongside them uh, and, and offering a helping hand, however that may be. Uh, we had a guy who got violently, violently ill with COVID uh, back in 2021, 2022. And he was out for months. And of course, he used up all his sick time. People were donating their vacation time to him. Um, we um, we took groceries to his family because he was the sole breadwinner. And, you know, we made sure and we took care of him while he was down so that his mortgage still got paid. And yeah, that's not what policy said to do, but you know, we, we lended a helping hand and we, we were helping him out because he needed help. And I've even gone and, you know, as a policy, uh, we don't loan money as a company, but if you need, if you need money, I've, I've opened up my wallet and helped people out before. And if anybody's going to lose, it's going to be me and I'll help you out. And it's bit me in the butt quite a few times. I have quite a few people that still owe me a lot of money. Um, but I did it because I wanted to help people. You know, I've, I've brought people alongside me. I remember one day, one day in particular, uh, I could just tell that there was this, this guy was struggling, that there was something going on. And so I, I brought him alongside me and I was like, what's going on, man? Let's, let's talk. And I just pulled him aside from work and and I spent like two or three hours just talking to him and just letting him unload. And he had been fighting with his baby mama and, you know, the weight of the world was on his shoulders and he didn't know how he was going to take care of his kid. And, and I just kind of talked through stuff with him and, and then circle back around and check on him every, every week or two and just, Hey, you doing okay. Do you need anything? Uh, but I think a big part of it is just treating people like they're people. Uh, it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, they're they're a cog in our wheel, and yeah, they're they're you know they help us to get work done. But they're people, and yeah. they need they need help. I would say and that. So um, I think I think that's the biggest part of it is just treat them like they're human. You know, I I see so much because I do coaching as well, and I see so many people say like. Oh, you can't miss one day in the first 90 days, right? Cause you're, cause you're on probation when you start. I'm like, is that even yeah. a reality? Like you cannot miss one day. So that means you can't have something happen for 90 days straight. Don't get sick. <laughs> like, or your kid or something happen. And I'm like, is that really reality? I think sometimes, you know, you, we have to remember that yes, the policies are there to help us and protect everybody employees, company, and owner. But at the end of the day, life is not black and white, like a policy on a piece of paper. I always say, I want to be a gray boss. A gray boss is a balance between the two, right? It's when they kind of get like smudgy or a little wet and it turns gray, but it also adds flexibility uh, without really showing favoritism, but treating them like a human being first. Um, yeah. And then you know, uh, going from there and assessing the situation, because we had the same thing happen and organize it. My first cleaner, my original cleaner from when I opened, she got COVID and she got very sick. And my policy would have said to fire her. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. And, you know, that's, I couldn't do that. And, you know, I've also loaned money. Our policy is the company doesn't, but that doesn't mean I haven't. Um, I haven't been burnt because I did, I have gotten all my money back. <laughs> um, but Libby's a little crazy and she'll come after you. I think that's why they know that if they're not going to pay it back <laughs> um, to not ask. But I mean, I've had the privilege of, of loaning the down payments to some of my employees for their first home ever, because otherwise mm. they wouldn't have had the cash to buy a house for that first down payment. But I mean, yeah. what kind of joy does that, that, that brings so much joy that, you know, yes, is it an HR nightmare? It could be, <laughs> um, but absolutely a hundred percent. People first. Um, I am a people, um, customers, results company. So we, it's a PCR, people, customer, results company. We, that's what we say we are. We pride ourselves yeah. in that. Besides the people part, any other tips that you do to really help keep that culture and drive the culture? Uh, Taco Tuesday is uh, very popular. Um, we, uh, no, we, we try and have fun. Uh, at work, you know, we do, uh, I'll, I'll bring in a taco truck from time to time and we'll, we'll do breakfast burritos for everybody or, uh, we'll take off and, you know, on a Friday evening and go bowling and I'll let them bring their families. You know, we try and include the family as much as possible because we're a family oriented company. It's why we don't work six or seven days a week. I know some companies that well, they, they work seven days a week. Well, you have no family time. You have no home life, work life balance when you do that. And so we, we only schedule work Monday through Friday. And we'll run over into Saturday sometimes because of rain or something like that or some other delay. But we're only scheduling work Monday through Friday because I want people to have a life outside of work. As much as I want them to enjoy and love their work and be at work, I'm under no illusion that this is not their whole life. This is just a very small portion of their life and they need to go enjoy their families and be able to go and watch their kids play baseball or softball or gymnastics or whatever. I want them to be able to enjoy that stuff. And so as much as I can support them in that, I, I try to do that. Um, but you know, we, we, we have a prize wheel where we give away stuff all the time uh, we, and on the prize wheel, we have everything from a uh, oil change. Uh, we'll fill up your car with gas. Uh, we've given away Yeti coolers, a free day off, a free sick day. Um, I think we did a $250 gift card to Home Depot or something like that one time. Um, just all kinds of stuff. Just, just to be able to bless them. It doesn't cost me a ton of money, but... You know, the, the, the value that I'm bringing to our employee because of it makes all the difference in the world. Plus, we also do little stuff, just our, our, our um, incentive package. You know, we have a vacation pay, sick pay, holiday pay, um, health insurance, dental, 401k with a match, um, all of this stuff that we're providing so that the, this, they can make this a career and not just a job. Um, and, and I want to be able to attract some really amazing people, but that's, that's how I do. Oh, we have free gym memberships, free chiropractic. Uh, you need to go get your back adjusted. Hey, right? go see the chiropractor. We'll pay for it. Um, but I want to take care of my people. And, uh, so I think that as much as I'm able to offer them value, you know, that's, that's what I do. I try to bring value to our employees, just like as a company, we're trying to bring value to our clients. I want to bring value to my employees because I'm, I'm very much a firm believer. If you take care of your employees, they will absolutely take care of you and take care of your clients. And so employees first, I take care of them. And then I know they have my back. I don't have to worry about anything out in the field because I know my employees have my back. I like that correlation because in the podcast we talked about, you know, right now it's a little, it's, a, it's harder. The marketing's tougher. It's more expensive to get customers. Mm -hmm. Customers are more price sensitive and shopping. They want more value for their money. And I think the same thing goes with employees. They want more value for the pay. Not necessarily that you have to pay a ton more, right? But they want more value. What am I going to get here that's different than going to, you know, um, a, a franchise or a big box store? What am I going to get here that I can't get there? 
and all the things that you said didn't cost a ton of money, but they provide, they create a more valuable job or workplace. Yeah. And value is in this is in, is in the eyes of the beholder. So not everybody looks for that because it's not some people's yeah. thing, but the people we're trying to attract, it would resonate with that. Absolutely. All right. So we will wrap up. Um, this was great. If you love the series um, on our YouTube channel, uh, we're constantly interviewing business owners and asking them, what are they doing to help attract and retain, attract, hire, and retain great talent or staff within their home service company or service company. So make sure that if you enjoyed this one, you like and subscribe so that you can get updated when we add and we add new video to our YouTube channel every single week. And when it comes to that recruiting space.